Will it be Swale for his trainer, Woody Stevens, or one of the Phillies, or who? Let's go to Howard Cosell up on top now for the post parade. Thank you, Jim. The post parade, number one, Althea, the favorite Philly, the jockey Chris McCarron, one of two Phillies coupled under Wayne Lucas's trainership. Althea in that troublesome number one hole. Riding from the fifth hole, the coupled horse, life's magic. The jockey Don Brumfield, and he is a very good one, has won more races at Churchill Downs than any other jockey. The number two horse is Van Landingham, the horse with such potential. He'll be ridden by Pat Day, who selected him over Taylor's special. And coupled with Van Landingham is Pine Circle, ridden by Mike Smith. And Van Landingham out of the 12th hole, Mike Smith's horse will be out of the 18th hole. The three horses, Rogers Shark, the jockey is Rick Wilson, and he'll be riding out of the two hole. The four horse, an early speed horse, is Bear Hunt, ridden by Don Macbeth, riding out of the number three hole. You see the odds as we go along. And the number five horses fight over. Octavio Vergara, the jockey, the odds 70 to one. And that horse is out of the sixth hole. Then comes the possible big overlay, Pally Time. Sandy Hawley, a brilliant jockey. Current odds 18 to one, incredibly, riding out of the seventh hole. Then comes the Bluegrass Stakes winner, Taylor Special. Clever Sammy Maple will be the jock and that horse will be riding out of the 10th post position. Then, Bill Hartak's pick to win this race, Silent King, the jock, the incomparable Bill Shoemaker, and of course, riding out of the 11th hole, and that's a good spot. At the threshold will be ridden by Eddie Maple, who had dreamed of riding Devil's Bag today, but not to be. 35 to one, the current odds, the 14th hole, and then Swell. Woody Stevens, Lafitte and Kai Jr. What a team. But riding out of the 15th hole in the very difficult auxiliary gate. And then comes gate dance. Jack Van Berg, the trainer. Della Husse looking for his third straight, but coming out of the 20th hole. And then come the field horses, beginning with Sauve. All of them at nine to one. We'll take you right down through them quickly. Bedouin is the 13 horse. Rexon's Hope, late finishing horse, number 14. Number 15 is Secret Prince. There he is, and number 16 is Majestic Shore. We'll get him in a moment, right there. And then Biloxi Indian with Diane Carpenter, the trainer, and then rounding out the field, 18, Coax Me, Chad. So there is your post parade for the 110th running of the Kentucky Derby. Coax Me, Chad, winding it up. And so, in this field of 20 horses... Move them into the starting gate now, and remember, Althea will be standing there for a long time. There is Swale, number 10. Number one there, Althea, going in. She'll be in there possibly three minutes or so before they go off, wearing the white bridle that Wayne Lucas's horses always wear, simply so he can recognize them. That was Roger Shark going in. There, up there is number four, Bear Hunt, down from New York, was second in the Wood Memorial. Number 12 there, so vague. He's going to go to the Epsom Derby in England after this, if all goes well. Now, 1A, life's magic. So vague, by the way, had the female jockey, Patty Cooksey, only the second woman to ride in the Kentucky Derby. There's number six right there. That is Valley Time, winner of the Hollywood Futurity, winner of almost a million dollars in his lifetime, by the way. And now moving in quickly, number five, Fight Over, another New York horse. Had a good work the day before yesterday, and his trainer, John Paracel is very high on him. Number six, Valley Time now from California. Going in, number 13 in there is Bedouin. Now we got 14, Rexon's Hope. He comes from way out of it and turned in a good account of himself in the Flamingo and in the Tampa Bay Derby. Number seven is Taylor Special, winner of the Bluegrass and Louisiana Derby, one of the favorites. Number eight is Silent King, comes from 25 behind. Bill Shoemaker on his back. Number two, Van Landingham, named after a hermit in Arkansas who lives on Cox's Ridge. Number 15 there, we have Secret Prince, another New York horse. 
Number, number nine going in now at the threshold. Now the auxiliary gate, remember, it takes two gates to load these horses. Number 10 going in there is Swale. Swale in the first stall. Number 16 is Majestic Shore. Time now to go up to our caller of this race, Mike Battaglia. Mike. Thank you, Jim McKay, and the horse is loading very well. Uh, Deluxe the Indian now in there. There we see Pine Circle up on the outside. Coach Me Chad waiting for Gate Dancer, and we'll be ready for a start. There at the post. Gate Dancer hesitates a little. He's in. All standing there. And they're off. Taking for the lead from the rail. It's Althea with Bear Hunt on the outside. Up in the center of the track, it's the Swale. Between horses, Van Landingham, Biloxi Indian is next. Down along the inside, Raja Sharp. Down the stretch for the first time, Althea leads at a half length. Bear Hunt second half. Swale is third by a length. Van Landingham fourth head, Biloxi Indian is a fifth. Right over is six by a half length. Valley time seventh ahead, Taylor special eight by a head. Down along the inside, Raja Sharp is next. Up from the rail, that's at the threshold, gaining ground. And on the extreme outside, Majestic Shore, length of secret print. On to the back stretch, Althea leads it by a length and a half. The whale takes second ahead. On the inside, Bear Hunt third ahead. Deluxe, the Indian fourth ahead. Fight over is now fifth by a length. Between horses, Van Landingham sixth ahead at the threshold. Seventh head, Valley time, eighth and a half length. Taylor special on the outside is next, followed by Raja Sharp. They're moving for the turn. Althea has a head in front. Swale is second by a length. Fight over third ahead. The look, the Indian is fourth. Bear Hunt fifth the length. At the threshold is gaining ground on the inside in sixth. Also gaining ground from the inside is Life Magic. They're midway through the turn and Swale gets the lead. Has it by a length and a half. On the inside, Althea second by a head. Gaining ground on the outside. Here comes the threshold. They're into the stretch. It's Swale in front by two. In the center of the track, fight over. On the outside, it's at the threshold. Coach me, Chad, now takes fourth. What is life magic? On the extreme outside, Gate Dancer with Sally Time. They're nearing the finish. It's all Swale. He's there by four lengths. On the outside, Coach me, Chad, second. At the war, it's Swale winning the... The Classic the climax of a day of dreams. And proud truth stimulated many dreams last winter. A three-year-old contender, but injury sidelined him. He's coming back, he's got a race over the track. This is his 12th start, he still runs a little green. Turkoman shivers at the prospect of winning a stake, but even in non-stakes competition, he's been impressive. He exploded here. This is the best seven furlongs I've seen all year. However, the Breeders' Cup, He's got to run against better horses than this. Track Baron, fast and tough. He'll look you eyeball to eyeball and try his guts out. But he likes to be alone on the lead. People who don't watch enough races don't realize that. When a horse is loose on the lead, he's going to be tough. If they let him go, they won't catch him. And the horse that won't let Track Baron go, by all odds, is Van Landingham. Winner of the Jockey Club Gold Cup, he likes to run on the lead himself. One of them will be on the lead, Van Landingham or Track Baron. If they go together, they could both collapse. Stalking will be Chief's crown. Beaten favorite in all three Triple Crown races this spring, but much better now. And he's won two races at a mile and a quarter, including this, the Marlboro, beating many of these horses. This race may not send anybody to the Hall of Fame, but it'll send a lot of us to the betting windows. The stretch, Harv. I like the fact you're picking the same horse because it shows you didn't have the brains to go through the race again. <laughs> he's got a good shot. This is a strategy race. I like the Chief. He's beaten these horses before. He may beat them again. This is a super horse race. Another chalk pick from Harv. Back to you, Dick. Well, there is an interesting line. Here's how it looks now. Chiefs crown the favorite at 2-1. to one. Gate Dancer 3-1. to one. And lots of support as well for Van Landingham at 9-2. to two. How about your choice, Dave? I'm in big trouble. <laughs> I have to agree with Pete Axtell. Oh, no. Oh, yes. I don't think I've ever picked Gate Dancer before, but I, I like him this afternoon. I think he's going to be terrific. Now down to Tom Hammond. We're at the starting gate, Dave, and the starter, Frank Hammond. Now for a $3 million run. Let's go upstairs. And 
they're up in the Breeders' Cup Classic, and Chief's Crown is away quickly. And so is Van Landingham, and Cordero sends Track Baron in between them now to grab the lead. Cordero puts Track Baron on the lead now, and he takes him back a bit. And Ben Lanningham comes after him from the outside. Chief's Crown comes away with the leaders, now racing in third position. Imperial Choice is fourth on the outside. Bounding Basque is racing in fifth. And then it's Gate Denser. He's sixth on the inside. Farther back are Turkoman and Proud Truth, the trailers. Track Baron with pressure from Van Landingham. The first quarter went in an even 23 seconds. Those two hook up as they begin their run up the back stretch. It's a gap of three and a half lengths. Back to Chief's Crown and Imperial Choice alongside. Another two back to Gate Dancer. And he's about seven lengths off the lead now. Bounding Basque alongside, racing in sixth position. Then Turkoman second to last in Proud Truth trails. 46 and four for the half mile. They continue up the back stretch. It's still Track Baron holding on to the lead. Van Landingham is right at his neck. It's another three and a half lengths. Back to a patient, Don Macbeth with Chief's crown. Now he asks him for a run with a half mile to go. Imperial Choice is right alongside Chief's crown. Gate Dancer is moving through in between horses now. Turkoman is putting in a big run toward the rail. And they're midway round the final for a long now. They're midway three for longs to run. It's Track Baron with a short lead. Imperial Choice is gaining ground on the outside. Ben Landingham. Chief's crown is surging. Chief's crown now emerges from in between horses. Imperial Choice is right there. Gate Dancer is closing boldly on the outside. Proud Truth, he was last down the back stretch. He's taking it to the leader. It's Gate Dancer in front with less than a furlong to run. Proud Truth is right at his neck. Proud Truth on the outside. Gate Dancer is game. Proud Truth ahead. Gate Dancer, those two a driving finish. Proud Truth has won it. Proud Truth got up in the final jumps to defeat Gate Dancer. Those two were heads apart, bobbing at the finish. The final time, two minutes and four fifths of a second. Proud Truth, the winner of the second Breeders' Cup Classic. The three-year-old Proud Truth, a surprise at seven to one, written by George Velasquez. The arch rival of Chiefs Crown, an off-the-pace threat, fifth in the Kentucky Derby, couldn't handle the track. But boy, he loved it at Aqueduct today. Just five days ago, Proud Truth won the Discovery by a neck in the greatest performance of his life. But this was his biggest payday this afternoon as he slipped through fractions of 23, 46 and 4, 111, the mile and 136 and 2, and mowed down Gate Dancer on the outside in the final furlongs, home in two minutes and four fifths of a second. Darby Dan Farms, Proud Truth. John Galbraith said this is the best horse he ever owned. He's just been proven right. Many of us thought that he wa that wasn't three million dollars. John Veach, the trainer, and on the far outside, wearing the brown and fawn colors, you're going to see Proud Truth roll on with Velazquez, who won earlier this afternoon with Life's Magic. It looked to me like I was going to be a winner here with a Gate Dancer. Chris McCarron left-handed whip there, but here comes Velazquez on the outside, and down the stretch they come for a two-horse race for the three million. Proud Truth on the outside with just five days rest. What a performance as he wins the Classic today. And a classic race again it was, the son of Graustark. And there you see it on the wire, by ahead, Proud Truth, and what was a concern for the Galbraiths and the Darby Dan farm people. The fracture back in May. Sideline was this horse, Proud Truth. Sideline from May until October. Maybe that was a big blessing in disguise. Certainly was.